So by now, a lot of you may have heard about the situation with the Call of Duty H2M mod. This was a mod built on the Modern Warfare Remastered engine, designed to be like a remastered version of the original Modern Warfare 2. Essentially, it was Modern Warfare Remastered, with a bunch of Modern Warfare 2 assets added in. I heard about this mod a while back, and it was set to officially release on August 16th, 2024. I think the team might have even been planning to release the mod a few hours early. But on August 15th, the H2M Mod's Twitter account tweeted out that their team members had received a cease and desist order from Activision Publishing related to the H2M Mod project. They announced that they were complying with the order and shutting down all operations immediately and permanently. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time we've seen a fan-made Call of Duty project get a cease and desist from Activision. Supposedly back on May 17th, 2023, a team member from the SM2 project also received one, and on May 22nd, 2023, the X-Labs team apparently did as well. For those who don't know, the SM2 project was essentially a Call of Duty mod that combined assets from several different Call of Duty games, and it had a lot of people, including myself, excited. As for X-Labs, it was a project that provided custom clients for older Call of Duty games, like the original Modern Warfare 2, Call of Duty Ghost, and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare. Now, when it comes to the H2M mod, this was something I was really looking forward to playing, and I know many others were too. Although Modern Warfare 2 isn't my favorite Call of Duty game, I still have a lot of fun with it. My favorite COD game is actually Modern Warfare Remastered, and with H2M being built on the MWR engine, it seemed like something I would really enjoy. One thing I was particularly excited about was that unlike many other custom Call of Duty clients, H2M supposedly wouldn't have an unlock all command, in a lot of these custom clients, you can just enter a command to max out your rank and unlock everything instantly, so it would have been cool to progress normally through the ranks in H2M without that option. Sure, in other clients, I can choose not to use the unlock all command, but it's different when that option isn't even there. Now, as the H2M mod's release date got closer, it gained a lot more attention, and that might be a big reason why Activision issued the cease and desist. I've seen a few different theories about why Activision waited to take action against this mod, one theory is that they waited for the Modern Warfare Remastered sale on Steam to end before issuing the cease and desist, since you needed to own Modern Warfare Remastered to play H2M and people were recently purchasing the game. It even made it in Steam's top sellers list. Also, according to Steam charts, Modern Warfare Remastered recently reached its highest peak player count since December 2016, which might have caught Activision's eye. I've noticed some people questioning why Activision felt the need to step in and shut down the H2M mod, especially since you apparently had to own Modern Warfare Remastered on Steam to play it. However, keep in mind that this mod included content not featured in the official Modern Warfare Remastered game, meaning through the H2M mod players could access content from other Call of Duty titles that they might not have purchased. This could have been a significant factor in Activision's decision to issue a cease and desist. Some people are saying that Activision doesn't want people to have fun or that they waited until the day before the mod's release to issue the cease and desist out of spite. There's also talk that Activision might have been worried this mod would interfere with sales for the next Call of Duty game Black Ops 6. In a video, one of the H2M developers mentioned something that supports the idea that Activision was concerned about this mod affecting Black Ops 6 sales. He explained how he received the cease and desist via email. It's not entirely clear to me when Activision actually sent the cease and desist, whether the day he saw it was the day it was sent, or if it had been sent days earlier. But in his video, he mentioned that one of the reasons given for the cease and desist was Activision's concern that this mod could interfere with Black Ops 6 sales. I don't think it's wrong to share the reasoning of the cease and desist that they listed in the letter. I didn't see anything saying that it was, but essentially, because of the popularity H2M was gaining and how close it is to Black Ops 6 releasing and kind of the marketing and the beta and stuff for like that, they did not want H2M interfering with possible sales of Black Ops 6. He also responded to a tweet saying, I can confirm it's true, whether just an excuse or otherwise. Now, even if Activision really did give that reasoning, it doesn't necessarily mean they were super worried about this mod impacting Black Ops 6 in a significant way. They might have just used it as an excuse without actually being too concerned. 
Some people seem pretty confident that Activision was really worried about this mod, but personally I think Black Ops 6 and future Call of Duty titles would have been just fine, and Activision would continue making tons of money off those games. I don't actually believe Activision was super worried about this mod. Also, going back to the idea that Activision waited for the Modern Warfare Remastered Steam sale to end before issuing the cease and desist, I'm not 100% sure if Activision issued it right after the sale ended or just before, but from what I understand, it seems like the cease and desist came shortly after the sale ended. But as I mentioned, some people are saying that Activision waited for the sale to end so they could profit from people buying Modern Warfare Remastered while it was on sale. But that idea seems kind of silly to me. People bought the game during the sale to prepare for the H2M mod, and not everyone was eligible for a refund on Steam by the time they heard the news about the cease and desist. But Activision could have just not issued the cease and desist, and once the mod came out and people saw it, uh, more people would likely have purchased Modern Warfare Remastered to play it, even after the sale ended. So Activision could have made even more money. The idea that they waited specifically for the sale to end just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Now, the idea that Activision deliberately waited until a day or a few hours before the mod's release to issue the cease and desist, there might be something to that. They may have done that intentionally to deter other people from working on other fan-made Call of Duty projects. If Activision doesn't shut these projects down early in development and waits until they're about to release, it creates a bigger deterrent for future projects. The people working on these mods won't know if or when Activision will step in, so they could spend years on a project only to have it shut down right before release. Even if you've been working on a fan-made Call of Duty mod for a few months and Activision hasn't said anything, that doesn't mean they won't eventually step in and shut it down. So that could be why Activision waited as long as they did, or it could just be the mod gained a lot of attention right before release, and it just so happened that they issued the cease and desist then. Again, I don't know for sure when the cease and desist was issued, but it seems like the H2M team received that email on August 15th, according to their tweet. As I mentioned before, this isn't the first time Activision has issued a cease and desist for a fan-made Call of Duty project. The SM2 project and X Labs supposedly also received cease and desists. I don't remember exactly what was going on when the SM2 project received theirs, whether it was close to release or just getting a lot of attention at the time. But looking at the modded Call of Duty clients out there, like those provided by X Labs, Plutonium, the Black Ops 3 client, or the H1 client, it doesn't surprise me that SM2 and H2M would be the ones to get hit with a cease and desist because they seemed like more ambitious projects that were gaining a lot of attention. But it does seem strange that X Labs got one from Activision because from what I understand, and maybe it's just that it was never made public, but I don't think Plutonium ever received a cease and desist. And Plutonium is similar to X Labs, just providing custom clients for different Call of Duty games. And I'm pretty sure Plutonium was always more popular than X Labs, also, both X-Labs and Plutonium used to provide torrent links for these older Call of Duty games and the DLC for those games on their website, but apparently X-Labs got hit with a cease and desist and Plutonium didn't. So that seemed really random to me. But the SM2 project and the H2M mod definitely stood out as more ambitious fan-made Call of Duty projects, so I can see why Activision issued a cease and desist for those. Doesn't mean I like it. But out of all the custom Call of Duty clients, I can see why Activision would focus on those two. Another thing people point out to justify Activision's actions is the idea that Activision has to protect its IP or it'll lose it, or that they'll lose the copyright if they don't take action. But that's just not true. I think people confuse copyright law with trademark law. Yes, when it comes to trademarks, if a company lets people use them and doesn't take action, especially over a long period, they are at risk of losing those trademarks. But with copyright, it's different. When copyright infringement happens, it makes sense for the copyright holder to take action, but they're not at risk of losing the copyright itself just because others are infringing on it. A company might choose to take action against copyright infringers for monetary reasons or to deter others from using their copyrighted material in the future. They also might not want products using their brand that don't meet their quality standards. So even though some people claim a company will lose its copyright if it doesn't protect it, that's not true. And this isn't the first time I've seen this misconception. It seems pretty common for people to confuse copyright law with trademark law when discussing these kinds of issues. I totally get trying to see things from Activision's perspective and trying to justify their actions. And like I said, there are valid reasons why Activision would issue a cease and desist for this project, but being at risk of losing their copyright for Call of Duty just isn't one of them. And let me be clear, Activision was absolutely within their legal rights to take the action they did against this project. 
Many of us, including myself, who are disappointed by what happened, aren't disputing that. This mod had a lot of people excited, myself included, and people are understandably bummed about what happened. But it's not like the cease and desist made the H2M mod disappear entirely. The mod still exists, and people are playing it, but it's different now than it would have been if the cease and desist hadn't come through and the H2M team had been able to officially launch it as they intended. One thing that's deterring me from installing the mod is the talk about the files potentially containing viruses. It's possible that some of these are just false positives and it might be safe to install H2M. But with all the talk about malware and the fact that I can still play the original Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare Remastered, I've decided not to install the H2M mod for now. This brings me to another point. Like I just mentioned, the original Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare Remastered still exist. I know the H2M mod was supposed to be like a remastered version of the original Modern Warfare 2, and people were excited about that, but even if this project was completely shut down and there was no way to play it, I don't think it's as bad as some people are making this situation out to be. The original MW2 and Modern Warfare Remastered are still playable. These games might not have huge player bases, but people could repopulate them if they really wanted to. It seems like some people are acting like they were going to grind the hell out of the H2M mod because they love the original Modern Warfare 2 so much, but now that it's shut down, they're acting like everything is ruined. And when I say shut down, I'm referring to the cease and desist. You can still play the H2M mod. But here's the thing. You can still enjoy Modern Warfare 2 by playing the original game. And I'm not just referring to the Steam or console versions of MW2, which are reportedly infested with cheaters and have numerous security risks. You can play the custom IW4X client for MW2 or the H1 client for Modern Warfare Remastered. But you know, people like new things and people like hype. And I feel like a lot of the time, that's why people play certain games because they're new or there's a lot of hype around them. In this case, a lot of people who were excited about H2M may not have been excited just because they love Modern Warfare 2 so much. For some, it might have just been because this was a new project that was getting a lot of attention. They might have played it for a few days or weeks, then moved on once the novelty wore off. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's different from how I typically approach video games. I don't choose to play games just because they're new or there's a lot of excitement around them. I usually choose to play the games I do because they seem fun regardless of whether they're old or have a small player base. As a fan of Modern Warfare Remastered and the original COD 4, if you told me that a bunch of people were going to hop on the original Call of Duty 4 and repopulate the game, I'd be about as excited for that as I am for this new H2M mod, even though Call of Duty 4 is an older game from 2007. I don't need a game to be new and popular to enjoy it. If a game is good, it's good. Now, sometimes people want to experience something new, and I get that. And yes, H2M is a new mod, but at the end of the day, it's a game with a bunch of Modern Warfare 2 assets built on the Modern Warfare Remastered engine. So it's not necessarily as new as a brand new official Call of Duty game. Anyway, the older Call of Duty games that many people say they love still exist. You can still play them. I know there are security risks when playing a lot of, if not all of the Call of Duty games on Steam, and I know there are cheaters in these older games, but you do have custom clients, which from my understanding are safer to play than the Steam versions. People could hop on these games, repopulate them and have a good time. But many people choose to play the newer CODs instead, even people who claim they prefer the older games. It's interesting how some people act like they are so desperate to experience the older Call of Duty games, but they choose to play the newer Call of Duty titles instead. And you know, it's one thing if these people have tried to play the older CODs but couldn't find matches due to low population, or they've had a bad experience such as running into cheaters, but how many of them are even making an attempt to play the older Call of Duty games? How many just sit there and complain about the new Call of Duty games while praising the old ones, but still choose to play the newer games they say are worse? I play Halo a lot more than Call of Duty, and I prefer the older Halo games over the newer ones. And to this day, I still play the older Halo games. Sure, I have played the newer 343 Halo games as well. And yeah, I'll hop on the current mainline Halo game, Halo Infinite, once in a blue moon. But I mostly play the older Bungie Halo games. And I'm not just talking about within Halo the Master Chief Collection. I even went out and bought an original Xbox console and set up Insignia so I could experience the original Halo 2 matchmaking. And before the servers for the original Halo 3 on Xbox 360 were shut down, I'd still hop on that game from time to time and try to find matches. And it's not just me, there are a bunch of people who play Halo and Call of Duty who prefer the older games and continue to play them. 
However, it also appears that some players who claim to significantly prefer the older games continue to play the newer ones instead, even though they don't find them as enjoyable. And I'm not saying that you're not allowed to play the newer games if you prefer the older ones. Even though some people like the older games more, they still might enjoy the newer games as well. So even if H2M were no more and you couldn't play it, and even if we never get a new Call of Duty game that's as good or better than the older ones, and even if you've already spent tons of time playing the older games in the past, those games still exist and you can still play them. Some people will complain and say things such as, oh man, I was really excited about H2M and then Activision shut it down and I'm really bummed about it. And then the next day they're back on the current Call of Duty game, Modern Warfare 3. Again, Modern Warfare Remastered is still there. OG MW2 is still there. You can play those games. People act like they want OG MW2 so badly, but then choose not to play it. Like I said, a lot of people want something new and popular. They don't always want to play things that are older, even though they claim the older thing is better than the newer thing. But there are some people, like myself, who will play older games regardless of how old they are. And it's not as if I don't want new good games, because I do. I'm just saying that a good game simply being older isn't stopping me from playing that game. An official Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Remaster is something I really want. Like I said, Modern Warfare Remastered is my favorite Call of Duty game, and it's easily the best remaster I've ever played. So if we ever get an official MW2 Remaster and it's done in a similar way to Modern Warfare Remastered, that's something I could really enjoy. And even though I was excited about H2M, it's still not the same as Activision releasing an official Modern Warfare 2 Remaster. Obviously, this H2M mod was created by a much smaller team than the teams that work on official Call of Duty games, and I wouldn't be surprised if the mod lacks the polish we see in Activision's Call of Duty games. And even though people were calling H2M Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, it's not exactly a remaster in the same way Modern Warfare Remastered was a COD 4 remaster. Not all the assets in the mod got the visual upgrades that the COD 4 assets did in MWR. For example, the H2M mod used the original Modern Warfare 2 maps, but they did make some tweaks to the look of the maps, like with the lighting. But honestly, from what I saw, I didn't even like the lighting changes that H2M made to the original Modern Warfare 2 maps. In many cases, I thought the maps just looked too bright. I think I actually prefer the look of the original Modern Warfare 2 maps, which is another reason why I'm not super tempted to install this mod. Plus, I've heard about and seen some bugs within this mod that I've never experienced in the original Modern Warfare 2. So, while this mod was definitely something I was excited about and wanted to play, and I still may play it in the future, playing the original Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare Remastered instead isn't a bad alternative. In fact, I might even enjoy those games more than the H2M mod, especially when it comes to Modern Warfare Remastered. Many people, myself included, wonder if we'll ever get an official Modern Warfare 2 Remastered game. I would love to know the real reason we haven't gotten it yet, because it definitely seems like there's a demand for it. A lot of people say MW2 is their favorite Call of Duty game, and it's not like we've never gotten a remastered Call of Duty game because we have, Modern Warfare Remastered. But other than that, we've only gotten the remastered Modern Warfare 2 campaign, which is really strange because with MWR they remastered both the campaign and multiplayer, but with MW2 they just did the campaign. It's just a really odd situation, and I would love to see behind the scenes and find out the real reason why they never did a full Modern Warfare 2 remaster. Maybe they still plan to do it at some point in the future, I just thought it would have happened by now. You know, a while back I had a theory, and this theory could still be true, but I was thinking that maybe Activision is trying to maximize their profit off Modern Warfare 2. What I mean is, maybe their plan was to release the Modern Warfare 2 single player campaign remaster first, and profit from that. Then, in 2022, they released the new Modern Warfare 2, which isn't the same as the old Modern Warfare 2, and then Activision might still profit from that game by attracting people who want a real Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer remaster. And then in 2023 with Modern Warfare 3, they included a bunch of maps from the original Modern Warfare 2, so that also may result in a bunch of people who want a Modern Warfare 2 remaster purchasing MW3 to play on these older Modern Warfare 2 maps. After all that, maybe they'll finally give us the real Modern Warfare 2 remaster. 
If they had given it to us up front, before all the other stuff I just mentioned, I think a lot of people might have just purchased the remaster and then not bought the new Modern Warfare 2 in 2022 or the new Modern Warfare 3 in 2023. But by giving us those games first, I think there are a lot of OG MW2 fans who bought into those games and would still buy a real Modern Warfare 2 remaster if we ever get it. So that's always been my thought about why we haven't gotten a Modern Warfare 2 remaster yet. But who knows, that might not be the case and there could be another reason. I also wonder if Call of Duty 4 Remastered wasn't as successful as Activision had hoped, although it's hard to say how successful that game could have been because it released alongside Infinite Warfare back in 2016. So we got two Call of Duty games that year. And that's another thing that's always bothered me about MWR. It was such a good game, but it shared that year with the release of Infinite Warfare, which kind of split the player base and there weren't as many people playing Modern Warfare Remastered as I think there would have been if Modern Warfare Remastered was the only Call of Duty game to release that year. Now that Activision has issued the cease and desist for the H2M mod, a lot of people who bought Modern Warfare Remastered to play this mod have refunded the game and many have left negative reviews on Steam. As of now, its recent reviews are sitting at overwhelmingly negative. When you step back and look at the history of a game like Modern Warfare Remastered, it's had a rough time. From the start, it launched alongside another Call of Duty game, Infinite Warfare. The two games were bundled together, and eventually, sometime after launch, supply drops aka loot boxes were added to Modern Warfare Remastered, and now MWR is getting a bunch of negative reviews on Steam because of this H2M cease and desist situation. It's sad to see because MWR is such a good Call of Duty game and an incredible remaster. I know not everyone was a fan of some of the weapons that were added to the game that weren't in the original COD 4, but I honestly didn't think that hurt the game much, if at all. I didn't feel like those new weapons changed the game that much, and COD 4 still played like COD 4, even with the new content. So anyways, those are my thoughts on this whole H2M mod cease and desist situation. It's a bummer that it happened, but I'm not shocked. Considering that I can still go play the original Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare Remastered, I'm not as disappointed as I would have been if there were no good alternatives. But I can still thoroughly enjoy the original Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare Remastered here in 2024. Hopefully one day we'll get the real Modern Warfare 2 Remaster. That could be something really amazing and I could get a ton of enjoyment out of it. And who knows, maybe that's a reason why Activision issued the cease and desist. Maybe they're working on Modern Warfare 2 Remastered, or maybe they have plans to do it one day. I'm not saying that's likely, but it's possible. I don't really know what the future of Call of Duty modding is going to look like. I don't know how many people are going to dedicate a bunch of time to working on fan-made Call of Duty projects when they know Activision can and has issued cease and desist for some of these projects after they've been in development for a while. So like I said earlier, this could deter a lot of people from making Call of Duty fan projects in the future. I've seen some people suggesting that moving forward, it might be better to keep these projects quiet during development rather than promoting them before release to hopefully avoid attracting unwanted attention from Activision. They could still issue a cease and desist after the project's release, but by keeping the project under wraps and then dropping it unexpectedly, it might make the difference between a smooth launch and a chaotic one filled with concerns about the files possibly containing malware. But anyways, that's going to do it for this one. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.